Hey you guys, it's Peter, and welcome to my channel, Peterisms, where I tell stories of my life and just little things I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today, and I am in such a great mood today. Um, a, it is my 24 year sobriety birth date, um, and it's surreal. And number two, I have lost a lot of weight, and I weighed myself this morning, and I am at the lowest I've been in a really long time, and so I'm really, really excited about that. So I wanted to do videos on all of my channels today about sobriety and recovery and addiction, um, being that it's my sobriety birth date. And, um, you know, I love telling the story about recovery because recovery is a gift that many people will never even be offered in their lives. And as I'm making this video, somebody is passing away from addiction right now and it, it is just it's so sad. And um, I talked a lot about it on a video that I made for my Peter Mon channel. So I'm just going to leave that over there. But I wanted to do something kind of different on here. And I was thinking about it last night. And I was thinking about this coin that I got um, when I left treatment. And at the end of my treatment, they gave me this coin. And it said on the back of it, it said, and I was trying to remember exactly what it said. And I have no idea where the coin is. I'm sure I, I since I save everything, I'm sure I have it saved here somewhere in my hair. But anyway, it said in the back, something to the effect of, you must first be a value to yourself before you can be a value to others. And I remember how much that coin meant to me when I got out of treatment. Not just because of the statement, not just because of what I had gone through, but that I had, you know, made it through treatment and I was leaving. And although I wasn't super excited about recovery and sobriety, like, and I was scared, which my counselor at the time said is like the perfect line to be between being, you know, scared and being uh, confident. At the same time, like, I was, I was like, I, I've done something with my life now. You know, I can move forward and I can put one foot in front of the other and I can m maybe be successful if I do what people tell me to do. And that was hard, right? But I would come back to that coin a lot. I remember that first year, you know, I would find that coin. And I also got like, you know, like coins and 12 step programs and um, keychains and things like that. But uh, that coin meant so much to me and it just, I, for some reason, it, I don't know, it remind, it was a souvenir of that time of my life of kind of like the transition from one, one period of my life to another. And I've often said that, um, you know, for me that I believe that it's like I'm going down a road and I'm going somewhere, right? And when I started using, I got off that road and went kind of off into the desert. And then when I got sober, I got back on the road. Not at the exact same point, but maybe miles down the road. So there was a lot of life that I missed, right? And, you know, the last 24 years has been kind of me getting a lot of that life back. And today I just have a life beyond my wildest dreams. I really do. And that doesn't mean to say that I don't have shit days and stuff doesn't happen. But, you know, I have a toolbox of ways to deal with that today. I have amazing friends and family members. I have an incredible support system. I talked to my sponsor for a very long time today. And, um, you know, I just, I have a marvelous life. And had you shown me this life the day before I got sober, I would never have believed it. I, I really don't think I had any clue what my life was going to look like down the road. I don't even really know that I knew anything other than surviving day to day. So I was thinking a lot about that coin last night. And today I went and I um, got online and I was like Googling, you must first be a value to yourself. And I couldn't find this quote anywhere. I don't know why. But I found this um, article that was written on a website called exploringyourmind.com. I will try to link it below if I remember. You guys know I'm horrible about that. Um, but it is called Seven Self-Esteem Quotes to Help You Value Yourself. And one of them on here is similar to that, but not really. But I started reading these quotes, and two of them I had heard before. And I was like, I, I want to read this on a video. Like, these are such powerful quotes. And for me, I am somebody that... Quotes really mean a lot to me. If you, you know, if you watch this channel for a long time, you know, like, I quote Maya Angelou a lot. I quote Oprah a lot. You know, I quote Dr. Phil a lot. I quote Harper Lee a lot. You know, I quote movie stars and singers. You know, lyrics to music mean so much to me. And quotes, which I guess are just, to some degree, snippets of wisdom, are easy ways for me to remember things. And they're kind of mottos. And when I got sober, the 12 step mottos, you know, like denial is not an Egypt and river. And you know, if you always do what you always did, you always get what you always got and keep it simple, stupid. And one day at a time, you know, on and on and on all of these slogans and these mottos, they, uh, kept me sober. Like, cause I could remember those things, those small things. So when I saw this article, I was like, I want to get on here and I want to talk about this today. So I'm actually just, I'm not going to read the article to you. I'm just going to read, um, 
the uh, different quotes and talk about them because I think they're fantastic. And you know I get on here and I do meditations every day. So this is kind of um, a little bit different. I do want to say one thing. Um, Elle Leary, whose channel, Elle Leary Artistry, who I love, she commented on my vlog last night and she said, I would love to see how you do like your morning prayers and meditations and gratitude. And I have never really shown that on there. And she was like, if you don't want to because it's too personal. I was like, no, I, I love that idea. If that is something that you guys would like to see, like, I'm not, I mean, it would be so boring for you guys to actually just sit and watch a video of me doing that. But if you, I mean, I don't know, maybe. But if you would like for me to get on video and actually explain the process of what I do, I, I have no problem doing that. And if that would help anybody out there, I would love to do that because I talk so much about it, you know? Okay, so the first quote um, is from Buddha. You yourself, as much as anybody in the entire universe, deserve your love and affection. And, you know, all of these quotes are about self-love and self-value. And it goes back to that idea that you must first be a value to yourself before you can be a value to someone else. And, you know, I think that we focus so much attention on other people loving us, other people liking us, us loving other people. Us be, I love you, I love you, do you not believe I love you, and you don't love me, and you know, and all this kind of stuff. But the reality is, how much do we really love ourselves? Do we treat ourselves the way that we would treat somebody that we really, really love? Do we? Or do we treat ourselves less than? And I think that, you know, for me, one of the things I've had to keep in check through the years is, when I fall short of that, and I don't treat myself the way that I really deserve to be treated, and I don't love myself the way that I would love others, I I need to keep that in check, right? Because just like I learned, until I can love, you know, like, until I am a value to myself, I can't be a value to somebody else. And until I love myself, I can't love somebody else either. You know, I can't, I don't have the capacity to do that. So that's the first quote. Um, the next quote is from um, Louise L. Hay, who wrote the book, You Can Heal Your Life. And if you've never heard of it, it's uh, fantastic. I've talked, I think I've talked a lot about it on here or either on my vlog. She came out with this book that was kind of revolutionary in the late 70s or early 80s called You Can Heal Your Life. And she talked in there about cases of like uh, people that had cancer and people that had HIV and things like that. And she went back and looked at how it was all like maybe some, to some degree affected or progressed by resentment and anger and fear in your life. And so what she believed was going in and remo removing resentment, anger, and fear from your life and internally, like emotionally fixing some of these things. And she did case studies where people literally would like go and remove the resentment from their life, remove the anger and the fear and they would get diagnoses back that the cancer was gone and um, it's like when you read this book it's it sounds crazy and but when you read the book like it makes so much sense so if you've never read it it's called um, you can heal your life I'll put it on my Amazon uh, store over there so you guys can check it out but I, this quote is fantastic you have criticized yourself for years and it has not worked try flattering yourself and see what happens. And this is very much also like the uh, Melody Beatty, you know, thing that I was talking about, where she focused so much on what she didn't like about her house. Do you remember the, when I was talking about the house? She focused so much on what she didn't like about her house that she never focused on what she was grateful for. And so she started, you know, practicing gratitude and her life changed. I think it's the same thing, you know? I know as corny as it is, start getting, you know, in the mirror every morning and telling yourself you're beautiful, you're worth it, you're lovable, you know, you're, and this is where all the affirmations come from, you know, you're a good person, you're a good son, you're a good daughter, you're a good husband, a good wife, you know, you're a hard worker, you know, you're funny, people like to be around you, one person likes to be around you, 10 people, you know what I mean? Like, tell yourself things that are true that you can get behind, and when you start this, it may only be one thing that you can get behind, but... I think at times we flatter people and we don't really believe the flattery. Flatter yourself even if you don't believe it. Fake it till you make it. Okay, the next quote, let me go through all these ads on here, is from Dan Coppersmith. Our self-respect marks our choices. Every time we act in harmony with our authentic self and our heart, we earn our own respect. It's that simple. Every choice matters. And you know, I talked to my vlog the other day about how like in 2019, like I want to be like, I want my soul to sing to the world. You know what I mean? Like into myself and I want to play albums and dance around my house and some things I've gotten kind of away from and wearing funky clothes that I love to wear and just having a fun, colorful life. Right. And if you've ever had that moment when you are like your soul and your choices are totally aligned, like have you ever gone out like to a club and like you're dancing and you just like, you know, you're in it to win it. 
I have a, I have this huge fear of uh, sharks and water, and so we went, this is not gonna make any sense to a lot of people. Uh, years ago, we went to, a bunch of us that are sober, and uh, then my husband and a couple other husbands went too. We went to Lake Norris, Tennessee, and we used to rent a cabin there on the water every year, every summer, and I would never get in the water because I couldn't see underneath it, right, because of this fear. That year, for some, for some reason, I just ran down the pier and I dove and I got in the water and I, the whole week, was in the water and I didn't care if there were sharks going to get me. I know, in Tennessee. Um, <laughs> years ago, I saw this movie about a shark that swam up river and it got, like, all these people. So, I think that's why it's still there. But, you know, like... When I think about connecting with my authentic self, my authentic self loves to be in water. I love to swim. I mean, I could be in a pool 10 hours a day. And that week, I just, the fear was gone, and I just, I was so connected to my soul. And that's, that's what that quote is talking about. Those moments that we are just laughing out loud and just having so much fun and dancing and just being so true to who we are, that's where we need to live. That's where our soul is happiest, I believe, too. Okay, Stacy Charter. Don't rely on someone else for your happiness and self-worth. Only you can be responsible for that. If you can't love and respect yourself, no one else will be able to make that happen. And I think that's so true. You know, I think often we look for validation and acceptance from others. I really do this. This has been something I have really worked on through the years because although I still, I think, you know, like I think because of growing up having been bullied so much that I really sought the validation and acceptance of others. I don't so much today. This year has been like a really valuable year for me and I'm working on a lot of things. And, um, you know, I still, I still crave that, but I don't need it the way that I needed it before. And it's different. And, you know, today it's about making myself happy, you know? And um, I think it has to be the same thing. And I always tell people this, you know, people are like, but I got to take care of my mom. I got to take care of this. You are no good for somebody else if you're not taking care of yourself first. You have to take care of yourself. You have to love yourself. Yourself. You have to respect yourself first because if you can't do that, then you you can't help somebody else, you know? Okay. Next quote. Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Wanting to be someone else is a waste of the person you are. And I love this quote, you know, so much. And there's... Um, I don't know why I can't remember it right now, but there's a Janis Joplin quote that's very uh, similar to this. You know, it's like, you have one life, okay? You are given one body, one person. This is who you are, Okay. Don't change it. Fall in love with it, okay? Fall in love with, like, your quirkiness. And, like, for me, like, so, like, my voice and my mannerisms and all of it and my, you know, wanting to crack jokes, no matter how corny they are, fall in love with all of that. Fall in love with the fact that I like to cry. Fall in love with the fact that, you know, I like cheesy love songs, you know, and Christmas songs. Fall in love with all of those parts of yourself that you're resistant to. Fall in love with those parts of yourself. Unless they're ugly, dark parts, then be willing to work on that, you know? But fall in love with those parts of yourself. Listen, we are always constantly comparing ourselves to other people. And, you know, earlier this year, I did a, um, a video on this channel about what I was talking about with a friend. And he said, we always lose by comparison. And we do, you know. Whenever we compare ourselves to somebody else, well, they have a bigger house. Or they have a nicer house. Or, you know, they make more money. And they have a better position. And why don't I? I've worked just as hard as they do. Or this or that. And, hey, I've fallen into that trap before, you know. Or they seem to have more luck than me. Well, Maybe we wouldn't want the world to be fair. Maybe their luck looks a lot different than my luck, if that makes sense. Maybe my life is a lot luckier than theirs, and I just don't see it, you know, on the outside in. You got to stop comparing yourself to other people. Your journey is your journey, and you're exactly where you're supposed to be in your life right now, and you got to remember that. I don't know if there's any more quotes. Let me see. Um... I think this might be the last one, and this is by Scott Peck, um, who my mother loved. His He wrote a book called, um, based on, I think it was based on the poem, um, the, but it was called The Road Less Taken. The Road Less Traveled? It was called The Road Less Traveled by the, the poem by Robert Frost. It was based on that. Okay. I believe it was based on that. <laughs> Do you guys know who Scott Peck is? Dr. Scott Peck? Okay. He also wrote a book called People of the Lie, and it was one of my mom's favorite books of all time, and I've talked about it on here at length before. Um... Until you value yourself, you will not value your time. Until you value your time, you won't do anything with it. Scott Peck. And, um, you know, I think that's really interesting. <laughs> and, like, that's something I've really dealt with in the past is being on time, you know. And I tell on myself a lot for that because it's something that I've always been working on, you know. And um, I do think that. And I think that valuing your time means also, okay, not going and getting everything on your list clicked off. But it also means valuing yourself and valuing your time enough to allow yourself to sit and watch a movie or sit and watch a Netflix series or just enjoy your afternoon or your day. I think all of that is important, you know, and to value your time and to really 
make the most of your time. Like I've said, we're on, this is not a dress rehearsal. You're only here once. Do what you want with your life, but make it enjoyable. Um, okay, is that it? Oh my God, there's just more and more and more. Uh, Les Brown, someone's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. I said this last night in my vlog. I had not read this article, and this is so interesting. I said you have to stop believing somebody else's lie. Um, did I say that in my vlog last night? Or was I talking on the phone? I think I was talking on the phone, actually, to somebody. You have to stop believing other people's lies, okay? You have to stop believing their reality of you. And I'm not saying that if it's true or if it's not true, but, like, if they put things out there in the world and you're like, what? That's not about you. You're not in that, okay? What they're saying about you, you're not in that. That doesn't have anything to do with you, you know? Okay. Don't become their reality. Don't fall into that trap, you know? It's like when you're in high school and people like the gossip mill and the rumors are going and just going and going and people say this about you and people say that about you. And it's like overwhelming, you know, over a couple, you know, days or weeks, it's like I just can't take anymore. And you either fall into it, if you can't beat them, join them. And you're just like, okay, I guess this is just who I am now. Or you fight, you know, and it's hard, you know, it's, it's sometimes hard because you want to retain your integrity, right? And you know who you are. And so you don't want to do that. But at the same time, you don't have to fall into that, you know? And I think it's a really important, you know, uh, quote, someone else's opinion of you does not have to become your reality. If somebody doesn't like you, okay. Not everybody's going to like you. It's just not that deep. Okay. That has to be the last one. <laughs> that is the last one. So seven quotes to help you your self-esteem. I think that was the title of it. I will link it below. Um, but I think it's important. And I think you know, one of the things that, especially even for me, that I really need to focus on going forward in 2019, maybe this will be one of my goals, I don't make resolutions, I make goals, is that, um, you know, I really want to focus on loving myself more, doing things that make me happy, so that I am happier and of service to other people around me. Because if I'm miserable, I mean, let's just be for real, okay? If you're miserable or, you know, down and just, you can't, like every day you're like, I just hate my life and whatever, and you're negative, you're affecting everybody around you, right? Ask for help. Ask the people around you to, if you can talk to them, you know, and see if you can get yourself going, you know, go talk to somebody professionally if you can, you know, and um, let's focus on 2019 being the happiest year of our lives. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.